Hey, everybody. As you know, May is Mental Health Month, right? You've probably seen a lot of things online, on TV, different people coming out, sharing their stories. And I appreciate the fact that we can dedicate a month to mental health. The problem I have with it, not that I don't want to celebrate what we do have, because certainly it's good to have something, but this isn't somebody's birthday or the death of a great leader or a president or um, we're, we're not celebrating a thing, right? It's, it's not like a holiday. This is something that really expands beyond time when we're talking about people's health, people's wellness. And so while I am incredibly grateful that we do have a month dedicated to mental health, the issue is that what happens on June 1st or in July or August. And uh, I think that we need to be very careful and we have to be mindful of the fact that just because the month is over doesn't mean that people's problems go away or that somehow uh, they have learned of every resource available to them. And so I don't want to make this negative by any means. Uh, again, I am grateful. It's good. But you've seen all the things like all these different banners you've seen, you know, uh, you, you've heard of the statistics and the one in fours and the one in fives. And there's some great advocacy groups out there pushing things. But here's what we know. Just because it's May, just because it's today, just because it'll be tomorrow doesn't mean that our problems get better or worse on their own. We have to be willing to stand in our truth. We have to be willing to share our story. I've long said that when people are willing to share their authentic truth, we will realize that we're far more connected than, than, than not. And, you know, it's just we, what we tend to do is we put our masks on. We hide behind this idea of what we believe people want us to be. And we create this persona that we sometimes wish we were, and it's not our truth. If you actually are willing to be vulnerable and stand in your truth, you, you'd be amazed at the people that rally around you and connect with you on a much deeper level than they will if you're putting out this uh, representative version of yourself. So anyway, as you know, if you've watched Ernie and Joe Crisis Cops, you know my story. You know I, I'm very open about the fact that I have a mental illness and I'm very willing to talk about those things. I'm willing to talk about childhood trauma. I'm willing to talk about my shortcomings, the the poor choices I've made throughout my life as a byproduct or as a result of really struggling uh, with my own mental health. And I still, to this day, go to therapy, right? And and it's okay uh, because I think that it's important, one, that we all have some level of therapy, even if it's just uh, annual check-in. But for me, it's maintenance, right? And it's how I get through uh, difficult times. It's how I learn to navigate and mitigate any challenges that are going to continue to come in my life because it's just the nature of the beast. So anyway, grateful. It's May. It's Mental Health Month. I've got the green going in my background. That's for your visual. Uh, th I mean, that is something that I wanted to aesthetically create just for your viewing pleasure because that's what you mean to me. I want your eyes to see that and just think, wow, man, this this guy really does appreciate me because I do. And uh, while I'm being silly, I hope you understand the uh, sincerity in this message. Uh, you are not alone. We have a responsibility to smash the stigma. Let's and we have. To, it's important, I think, that we understand too. Where did stigma come from? We've created it, right? Our our people. Uh, this isn't something that's. Um, just produced out of air. People have created the stigmas and stereotypes that we have. So people have to be willing to undo them. Really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for being a part of this journey. I see you. Bye-bye.